My name is Brian Clancy and welcome to the Fulcrum Democracy Forum Meet the Change Leaders program made possible by our dear friends at CityBiz. It's all about celebrating the work of America's most innovative and inspiring leaders who are working to change our toxic politics for the better. We always do two things during these interviews. We learn about what these leaders are doing and why it matters. And we also learn how all Americans can get involved in supporting their efforts in 2024 and beyond. Today, we are beyond delighted to have Sarah Gifford as our guest. She is the co-founder and COO of Activote. And I have to say, I've been in this space for, for 10 years. I've seen a lot of online tools uh, to try to help and empower voters. Sarah and her team have created the most powerful and easiest to use online app I've ever seen. I think it's something, frankly, that every single American would benefit from having and using. So I can't wait to dig into more on what they offer and their plans for the future. So without any further ado, I want to welcome Sarah and, uh, and fire off my, my first question. So Sarah, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Um, th this is sort of the elevator pitch question. What's the most important thing or takeaway you want all Americans to know about your organization and the role it's playing in help, helping improve our politics? Thank you so much, and, and thank you for having me. Um, at the end of the day, politics is about people, uh, and democracy is about voters. And all of this works when voters are informed and confident and participating in our elections. Um, at ActiveVote, we truly believe democracy is, is at its best when as many people as possible participate. Um, and so what we're trying to do at ActiveVote is make sure everybody feels that empowerment to cast their vote. When you look at research for why people don't vote, there's many, many, many reasons. Um, but quite a few of those reasons are they don't know when elections are. I know this might sound crazy in 2024, but think about um, even in 2024, some people will have a presidential primary on a different date than their state primary, on a different date than their local elections, on a different date from November, right? That's, that's a lot of opportunities to vote. Um, and that's not even talking about an odd year um, when the same might happen. So it's easy to miss an election. Um, you know, and then another big element is a lot of people don't want to vote if they don't know who to vote for. There's a sentiment among many that they don't want to cast the wrong vote. Um, at ActiveVote, we don't believe that voters are apathetic. I truly don't. I've not talked to any single voter, whether they're active or inactive uh, in participation, who's really apathetic. They care about their family, they care about their community, um, and they care about this country. Every single one of them. I cannot find an exception um, in, the, in the people we've spoken to. And so make them feel informed, make them feel empowered, um, put it in the power of their own hands, um, let them do it in private, don't do it in public, don't pressure them into you know, sharing any specific belief. Um, and if you do all of that, people show up. Uh, we've been doing this now for over five years, uh, and we have statistics that show that voters who engage with our platform to help them you know, prepare and cast their vote and build that civic habit, the first election after they use our app, they're 19% more likely to show up. Nine elections later, they are still 10% more likely to show up than, than historically. So we are really helping create super voters. Um, and we believe Democrats, Republicans, independent, that's just good for democracy. Sarah, thank you so much. That was a great elevator pitch. I, um, I, another thing that, that strikes me so much about your model and your tools is you're not expecting people to quit their day job to be a citizen. So you, you, you've got a rich set. You can, you can spend as much time as you want, but you don't have to spend all your time on that. There's still time to cook dinner and walk the dog and all those things. So maybe you could tell a little bit about about the process you help people go on that I think is really pragmatic. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you look at, you know, what makes a super voter, folks that vote in every election, it's that voting becomes a habit, right? If I look at my personal story, my, my habit started when I was a kid. Um, elections were at my elementary school. My parents used to take us to the polls and we weren't allowed to go to class until they voted. Now, as a seven, eight year old kid, I was in tears being late to school. And my parents had a very clear message. There's some things that are more important than being on time to school. And this day is one of them, right? So that's where my civic habit started, right? Was my parents at my elementary school making me late to class. Um, but you can still build habits in a lot of different ways. And when you look at how do you build that habit, um, to your point, Brian, it's not about making this a full-time job. Um, no one has time for that. 
right? So the way ActiveVote is set up is you get a three minute action each day, right? And during election season, those are likely to be election related actions, letting you know what the absentee ballot rules are in your state to see if you um, could do that or can't do that, depending on those rules, letting you know about, you know, early voting if it exists and, and all of that. But outside of election season, it's still about the functioning of democracy. And that is these people are implementing policy on our behalf. So educate folks on policy, do so in a de depolarizing way. When we ask questions about policy, we don't ask yes, no questions, for, against questions. Those are inherently polarizing because all of a sudden you're in two boxes um, and that's not good. So we ask questions and we give five answers and those five answers go across the political spectrum and that allows people to be progressive on some issues, conservative on others, centrist on others, right? Giving folks the, the permission to be nuanced in their views um, and we find that's really depolarizing, but also really engaging, right? Those policy questions are the most engaged part of our app. Um, and so throughout the year, 365 days a year, three minutes. You're standing in line at the grocery store, you're waiting to pick up, pick up your kids from school, you might be on the train. Um, being engaged and being informed doesn't have to be a big lift. Um, it can be simple, it can be easy, and we believe that makes it more accessible. Thank you. I think that's an amazing part of your model. And, and, and you add up three minutes a day of quality engagement, not just grinding your teeth and saying, I can't believe what's happening in Washington or at the State House. Um, it, it can end up making a big difference. Um, I also want to salute you for overcoming childhood trauma around voting uh, to lean into this. That, that takes a certain tenacity um, and, and strength of spirit. Um, related to that, my next question is, is about things that you've seen that give you hope. Because I think a lot of our city biz um, viewers here, look, they're leaning into this. They care about the country. They're looking for ways to move forward. But maybe you could share some things that you've either directly been involved with or things that you've seen that, that, that make you feel that we can get traction and we can make a difference. So there, there are two things, um, three things, actually, that give me immense hope. Um, so one, one of the things we do in ActiveVote is we reach out to tens and tens of thousands of candidates each cycle to get them to do our survey so we can help voters. They answer the same questions voters answer, and then you can see in a little visual, you know, who's close to you, who's far away to help, you know, help inform and empower that vote. Um, as part of that process, I probably talk to four or five people running for office almost every week um, who have questions about the survey or questions about the app or, or, or questions. Since we focus a lot on local elections, a lot of those are people running for school board, town council, city clerk. When you talk to those people, again, party be damned, um, they all just want to help their community. Many of those people are not running for a paid job, or if it's paid, it's $1,000 a year. I think a lot of Americans don't realize that for local officials, this is not, this is a side gig for many of them, right? For many local officials, this is a volunteer thing that they do, um, you know, for, for little or no money. Um, and every time I speak to those and they have questions and they have comments about their community, because I always ask, hey, what, what are you hoping to, you know, do in your community? And again, regardless of party, I am inspired by those answers, right? Um, and sometimes it's, you know, hey, we need new books for the school. Sometimes it's, hey, um, we really need bike lanes because we're, we're having issues with some commuters, right? And people feel, you know, danger. And so when you talk to these people running for office, they have the biggest hearts um, for their community. That gives me immense hope. And that's not changing at the local level. And I think that, that, that sometimes gets forgotten when you only follow national politics. Um, so, so I think that's one. Um, I think the second is participation is up. Um, you know, look at the 2020 election, right? Which I know for many of us was, was painful for, for all sorts of polarized reasons, but more people voted in that election than in many before it, right? And that should give us hope. People are voting, people are showing up. Um, people are engaging with democracy. That gives me hope. Um, the, the last thing is, like I talked to a lot of candidates, we get a lot of questions from voters. Um, I get a, I manage our, our mailbox of questions that come in from voters. We probably get 200, 300 a week. Um, and many of them are first time voters who just want a little bit of help. Hey, hey, how do I do this, right? I, this is the first time I'm doing it and I, I'm looking at that. That gives me enormous hope. Here's a bunch of people, old, young, rural, urban, all over the spectrum voting for the first time um, and just trying to get a handle on it. And every, those are my favorite emails to answer, my favorite phone calls to make. Um, because sometimes it's just that one little question that stops someone from voting. And I think besides that, that gives me hope. I think for everybody who sees this, 
Realize that some of the people around you might actually talk a lot about politics, but might not know how to fill in their mail ballot. You could help them with that, right, if they, if they need that. Um, there's a lot of people in our ecosystems um, that, that just two or three minutes of help um, and I think, you know, again, many of us watching are experts in, in this, right, in, in, in how to navigate some of these systems for people that are voting for the first time. And it gives me hope every time I do it. And um, by, by sharing that story, um, I hope all of you help someone in your network if they need it. Sarah, thank you so much. I, I, I think all three of those are, are authentically hopeful. And I, and I also know... Um, you know, those of you who want to learn more about Sarah's background, which is amazing, we don't have time to talk about it in detail today, uh, go to the ActiveVote website, um, get the app immediately, but then take a look at, at, at the team. Um, she's not somebody who does things just um, because she wants it to work this way. Um, very analytical, asks incredibly tough questions, tests everything, and then includes both their product um, and also the choices you've made. Um, to where what you, you know what you lean into so so thank you those are those are great I, I'm feeling better already so thank you um, but my next question is what are you most excited about over the next year or so um, and and you can take this as being very specific to the to the active vote lane which which again we is totally valid or or, or anywhere that you want to take this question you know, first of all, I wake up every morning excited just for another day. Um, I'm an optimist um, and, I, and I enjoy, you know, the things that come in front of me. <clears throat> if you look at, you know, 2024, I think there's a lot of people when they hear that, ooh, 2024, excitement and, and happiness is not the first thing that pops into your mind, especially for folks who pay a lot of attention to politics. Um, I think one of the things I'm incredibly energized by, we are doing a huge push to try to increase primary voting. Um, as many people already know, many of the races will not be decided in November. They will be decided in your state primary. Um, be, you know, and that maybe it's gerrymandering, and maybe it's just you live in a very urban or a, sorry, a very progressive or very conservative area, right? And it's not gerrymandered at all, and that's just the nature of your county. Um, <clears throat> but there's many races that are going to be decided in those primaries, and so we have an entire campaign this year to try to increase primary participation. Um, one, I think it'll help with the habit for folks to then maybe vote in November. But two, it's going to make a lot of decisions, right? And I think as we start talking to people about primaries, we, as we start looking at this, um, there's a lot of, you know, assumptions people make. of like, oh, well, there's never a contested race here. I was like, well, hey, we can help you check that because, you know, maybe there is this year. Um, and or, oh, you know, it only matters in November. Well, hey, we can talk about that. Um, I think the other thing that we are incredibly excited about this year we are working with a professor who has been looking into how do we combat some of the mistrust in elections, right? How do we help build trust, you know, in the process? Um, and what her research showed was that one of the ways to do it is to pre-bunk uh, some of the misinformation that you expect might come out. And so we're working on a whole series of, say, trust in elections content um, that is really focused on explaining some of the details of the process. So. How, so once you put your ballot in that box in your polling place, where does it go? Um, how is it counted? Uh, how does that change by state? Um, and, and how is that going to you know, impact how things are reported? And, and we're really excited about that because one, some of this stuff, to be very honest, I didn't know before we started researching it, and it's pretty cool um, you know, how, how much secretaries of state and county clerks and town election officials do, um, it's spectacular. And so um, I'm really excited to get that content out because um, maybe some of the nerds out there will be just as interested in it as I've been. Well, thank you so much for leaning into that one too because trust levels on, across the board, institutional trust levels are, are at all time lows in the United States. And, and we've got we've to find a way to, to build, build the trust and have a foundation of it. So thank you. Thank you very much for for taking that on as a, in addition to, uh, to all your other efforts. Um, I, I, so my next question is a personal question. So um, you've already said you're an optimist. Um, you, you wake up in bed excited about the day to come every day, which is pretty darn good. So I, I can't, I don't, I don't meet that bar, but I'm a pretty optimistic person. Um, but I'm curious about your choice and, um, because you could be doing a lot of different things and you've done a lot of different things in the for-profit world and, and, and had a very dynamic, creative career. 
and yet you've chosen to lean into one of the toughest um, challenges on the planet Earth. And I, I, I'm just curious about your, your, the motivation, what, um, what drew you there. We know a little bit about your childhood trauma, but I don't think that's enough to explain all of it. So I'd, I'd love to get a sense of your, uh, of your journey. Um, and, and again, we're deeply appreciative, but, but want to get a sense of sort of that arc that led you where you are today. You know, um, I think it's a couple things. So one, uh, one of my co-founders at Vote. Um, this is kind of an interesting story. So he was actually born in the Netherlands, um, and now I'm an American citizen, but his dad still remembered being liberated, um, from the Nazis by the Americans. And so my co-founder grew up with a father who had an enormous admiration and appreciation for the United States. Um, in so much so that he would wake up at three o'clock in the morning in the Netherlands to watch presidential debates. So my co-founder started doing that when he was, I think, nine years old, because how cool is it at nine to wake up at three in the morning to watch TV with your dad? Um, but as part of that kind of upbringing for my co-founder, um, his dad took him to hear the new U.S. ambassador to the Netherlands speak. I think he was 13 or 14 years old at the time. And this gentleman shared in that session that he spent the first third of his life it, taking advantage of America's public education system. He spent the next third of his life taking advantage of America's economic system. And so he wanted to spend the last third of his life in public service. And for him, that was being an ambassador. Um, and for my co-founder, that story resonated. And the first time I heard that story, I thought, oh my gosh, that can be me. Um, you know, that can be me because you know what? I'm a product of U.S. public education, right? I took advantage of that. So the money that goes into that system helped educate me, right, when I was growing up. I absolutely took advantage of America's economic strength and economic system, right, that I could work in um, for a large part of my career. Um, and when I looked at, okay, what does public service look like to me? Um, I'm not built to run for office. That's not my, uh, you know, area. Um, I've not donated enough money to be an ambassador. Uh, so that's, you know, not going to be in my, in my area. And so um, when I looked at, hey, what can my public service be? I realized, hey, what am I good at? Tech. I've spent my whole career in tech. Right? What am I passionate about? Um, America, civics, right? empowerment, participation, you know, all of that. How can I put all of that together? And so that's why we offer ActiveVote for free. We never ask anyone for money. Um, in fact, we donate to nonprofits, um, as Brian knows, uh, th that want to help us get the word out about this to really help kind of create a virtuous cycle in this ecosystem. And so, um, you know, the simple answer, why am I doing this? is because I can. Um, and I think that for every American, when you look at some of these things, so, okay, I happen to have the time, to, you know, to, to build an app and to, to work on this, but everyone can do something, right? And something can be as small as voting. Something can be as small as picking up trash on the street when you're walking through town to make your community a little bit better, right? The thing that we do to kind of give back um, doesn't have to be huge. Um, it, can, it can be small, and all of those small things are still incredibly impactful. Um, and so... This is what I can do, um, and this inspires me and, and keeps me passionate. Um, I'm not going to lie, I think a little bit in your question, this is hard work. Um, I remember very early on, you know, talking to somebody about this work when I was kind of finally realizing how hard it was, because I was maybe a little bit too cheery-faced and, and, uh, <laughs> and naive for, you know, what this was going to look like. Um, and I remember someone told me once, you know, Sarah, you need to realize you used to sell chocolate chip cookies. You had something everybody wanted, right? And they saw it and thought, ooh, I want that. You're now selling broccoli. It's really good for you. Um, it doesn't actually taste that bad, um, but you're selling broccoli, right? And, that, and I think a lot of the work in this democracy space and this advocacy space, we're selling broccoli. Um, really important, um, but it's just a little bit harder to get folks excited about. Um, but that just puts another challenge that we can tackle right in front of us. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. Um, look, we know each other. We've hung out. I hadn't heard that story from the Netherlands before. And, um, you know, sometimes it takes people from another country like the Tuckville to tell us about ourselves and inspire us. But, but the critical thing is that you took that and ran with it and made profound decisions about your life, about what you were going to focus on, um, and, and your willingness to embrace Broccoli. So at least it's not kale, <laughs> but, it, but it's broccoli. And also the way you've done it, you've made it a pretty tasty broccoli, I have to say, for people. Um, but again, appreciate it deeply. And I also appreciate the, the role of stewardship you play 
in the broader movement too. That's, that is a, a very big deal because our entire community is taking on really tough problems. So thank you so much. I, I, I want to pivot now to, um, and this is very related. So um, a, lot of, a lot of American citizens and, and, and city biz um, viewers now are, are, are on the sidelines in some way, and, um, or maybe they're on the sidelines and say, I want to lean in somewhere incrementally, and, and that can be daunting. And so I, I, I wanted to get your, your thoughts, and frankly, I think, I think ActiVote is a great opportunity to lean in in a way that's pragmatic and doesn't hurt that much and, um, and is good for you. Uh, but, but I wonder if you, can, you could you know, sort of lay out a path for, for our viewers right now of something they can do today, um, or even better, in the, f- the next five minutes, um, that, that can make a difference and get them on a path which actually is enriching. It's not just about broccoli. It, there's also an opportunity to, to feel more connected as a, as a citizen and, and being part of the solution, not part of the problem. Yeah, so I have three ideas. So one, very selfishly, go check out ActiVote. Um, I, I truly think it's cool. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I think it'll help you never miss an election. Um, so selfishly, number one, you can do, go check out ActiVote. Number two, you can do, just sit back and think for a moment about people in your network. Cousins, uncles, brothers, sisters, family members, you know, whoever it is, and come up with five names and be like, you know, I'm not sure that they vote. Um, and make, make the, this determination for yourself. Hey, I'm going to make sure for those five people, I know when their state primary is if they don't live in my state, and I'm just going to call them and remind them. That's, if everybody watching this does, talks to five people um, about voting, we'll, we'll get more votes, right? More folks are going to show up. So I think that's number two thing you can do really quick. The third thing um, and this is one of my joys of being part of this broader movement, is go to citizenconnect.us. It is one of the best sites um, to start dipping your toe into this space, right? So pick a topic you're interested in, search for it. There might be a session about the environment, if you're passionate about that. There might be, you know, a session about depolarization and talking to the others. There might be a session about gerrymandering, right? They've got so much content and so many events that are upcoming um, where you can find one that you're interested in. Um, and some of them are longer, some of them are shorter, um, but it's incredibly easy to navigate and gives you that way to kind of dip your toe um, into this space if you want to do something small. So those are my three things. Get active vote, help folks in your network vote, and check out Citizen Connect. Sarah, and I want to be clear with our viewers, I didn't put Sarah up to the number three on Citizen Connect. Um, I'm the co-founder of Citizen Connect. There are, uh, there are over 600 organizations, nonpartisan organizations. She did a much better job than I could ever do in, 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 in pitching it. So thank you so much for that. My last question is are there some organizations that you've you personally engaged with their content, their tools, et cetera, that you might want to highlight now for people? Look, number one stop, Activote. Uh, but other things that that they may want to, other organizations they may want to consider plugging into or exploring at least. Yeah, absolutely. So so depending on your interest and your time, here are some of my favorites. Um, so I read the flip side every day. The flip side is a newsletter. Um, they're also part of the Listen First kind of coalition that Citizen Connect is a part of and that, that ActiVote is a part of. Um, it's a quick email. It takes one issue and it tells you the left and the right. It's, it's easy to read. It's easy to consume. And each day I get, I get perspective on one, one issue. So that's if you have just a couple minutes a day, I would say check out the flip side. Um, I think another one of my favorite organizations is... Um, Living Room Conversations. They have these wonderful thought-provoking guides um, that allow you to just think through an issue, right? And so whether it be, um, you know, drug abuse, right? And they ask you questions to just think about, to say, oh, have have, have I ever experienced anyone in my community, in my personal community that had gone through this? And it opens your eyes on issues um, in an absolutely wonderful way, um, in an absolutely personal way. And so I think... um, Obviously, this is not to say that all of the 600 organizations are not ones I love, um, but those are two that, you know, ActiVote has partnered with a number of times um, and are just fantastic, uh, you know, groups to, ch- to check out. Sarah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we, we've got our executive producer is sort of tapping me on the shoulder. He knows that I could go all day talking to Sarah and it would be time well spent. Um, but I also want to respect how busy Sarah is and um, look, I just have gratitude for the work you and your team are doing. And again, I would encourage everyone. Um, and, it, and it's it. The link is here um, in uh, in CityBiz. So just just look to uh, the text below this video 
and, um, and, and just do that today. I think if you just, um, you know, second this ends, just check it out um, and it's going to enrich your civic journey. So Sarah, thank you so much for all you do, um, both, both in your role um, at ActiveVote and also in your broader role in the entire movement because it, it means a lot and, and you're a true leader and you exemplify um, the values that, um, that our movement is trying to bring to American politics. So thank you so much. Yeah, th thank you for having me. I think my, my fi final words, it takes a million people doing a million different things to make this work. So it's ActiveVote, it's what CityBiz is doing by helping us out here, it's what Citizen Connect is doing and everybody else. Um, and so I think I just absolutely love being a part of this country and a part of this movement. <laughs>